only the first month of 2021 and all this shit has been going on. Yeah, January is going in, dude. Hey, 2021 was like, hold my beer with it when it came to 2020. <laughs> but um, Biden's inauguration happened, right? We're not really going to go deep into it. Obviously, people will talk about it. Uh, we knew it was going to happen in um, January 20. Big thing for me was that, hey, now that it happened, I can start criticizing Biden. People can stop telling me, hey, can you wait until he's in office? Nope, now I can criticize him. But anyways, inauguration, I really don't have any huge criticism, obviously, about the inauguration. It, it's cool. It happened. I did. We did discuss about it a little bit in pre-production, but uh, Zeno just raised his hand like he's in school, so I'm going to go ahead and let him say whatever you want to say. There was a quick thing I wanted to touch on before the inauguration, because I, okay. you know, I, was, I was up you know, for work, and I had it on going on background. And um, Trump, Trump did his going away uh, message. You know, usually the president that's going away usually attends the inauguration, but he didn't. He did like a little message in like an airfield or whatever. His, the, the Trump adult kids were there crying. Crying. This is so stupid. Um, there were parts of Trump's speech where I thought, huh, it actually sounds kind of gracious. And then it would say things like, um, when the market, the market might fall, and you know, I told you so. And then he also said, um, have a nice life. I'll see you soon. <laughs> you know, just weird. <laughs> see, he's just a weird guy. Um, but then, then he flew off on whatever to Florida. Listen, that's it. When you're a narcissist like that, you he seriously doesn't understand why people don't like him. Yeah. He really doesn't. He does not understand it at all. Like he's like, why don't you like me? He does not understand. It. That's just how narcissistic he is. Yeah. And then obviously he has all these yes men or whatever, and then um anyways yeah so he that happened before the inauguration obviously and then mike pence did go to the inauguration but actually be, the day before the inauguration um talk about the COVID, um the the, the tribute thing. to the COVID, uh, people right. who lost their life. yeah 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 so the there was a big almost like a vigil um for all the people that the hundreds of thousands of americans that died from COVID. um it was a night-long event uh, i think they did at arlington National Cemetery. Uh, it, was, it was very good. It was very heartfelt. And the thing about it is you, you realize that this is the first time that the president or the incoming president has done something to acknowledge the deaths. The, the sitting president, you know, was so busy just trying to be like, hey, look, I'm doing a good job, man. Like a million people could be dead. It's only 300,000. So I'm doing a good job. Why are you guys? Why are you guys stressing me out? So, so this is one of those first times you actually saw at the highest levels, people saying, "I feel your pain, and we're gonna do something to remember you." Now, obviously, they're not gonna get their family members back. You yeah. know, it, 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 this doesn't do much to to help them in the grand scheme of things. But it's always good to know that people give a crap, and so that's what happened the day before the inauguration. Um, that the the incoming administration did. So, you wanna you want me to talk about what happened on the inauguration, like during the inauguration? Uh, yeah, we're gonna uh, like I said, we're gonna we're just gonna touch on highlights. Um, inauguration happened. I'll be frank, I don't watch inaugurations. I really don't. Uh, they're like the boring part to me of the award show. <laughs> if the speeches and all that stuff, I always catch them on YouTube or whatever. Um, Obama's speech, I got it on YouTube. George Bush, I didn't pay attention to it because I was like in ninth grade or eighth grade or something like that. So I really didn't pay attention to do it. Anyways, but I never watched inaugurations. I didn't watch, I, wa I never watched Obama's. I never watched uh, Trump's for obvious reasons. <laughs> I didn't watch Biden's, but you know about the highlights. Um, I caught some of the highlights. I looked them up on YouTube and all that stuff. But uh, since you watched it, because we already talked about how you just love politics. Uh, you go ahead and talk about it. So I actually didn't watch the second Obama uh, inauguration. I saw the first one and I saw Trump's, of course. It's a sequel, you know? Yeah, never, yeah. Then the never. second one was I. Uh, so, <laughs> um, the the inauguration itself was pretty cool, um, and and I'll say I'll tell you why I say it's pretty cool, right? It was one of those things where we had gotten so used to over the last over the previous ten months, everything being gone, like the the new normal being gone. No, no fans at baseball games, you know, you know, minimal capacity at NFL games, you know, concerts have been shut down, all these things. There was every reason to believe that the inauguration was going to, was going to be a victim of that as well. 
you know, and then you had the Capitol Hill riots two weeks ago, uh, at this point now it's three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and you thought that, okay, because of the security concerns, the very real security concerns, that they were going to say, let's just do a virtual inauguration, which people had been saying they should do. Um, but they didn't. They ended up doing an inauguration that looked a lot like inaugurations we've always seen. The dignitaries that you want to see come in, they came in. Bernie uh, came in he, he, instantly memeable. Uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll touch on that. Um, the... Um, Michelle Obama looking regal as always, you know, in her purple. Uh, I think what Kamala Harris was wearing, it's, a, it's, it's like the theme was um, matching, uh, was it monochrome suits? Is that what they call it? Where the top and the bottom matches. Kamala Harris had like a blue matching. Um, mm-hmm. Michelle Obama had like a purple. I think Hillary Clinton also had a blue and they did like a who wore it better uh, <laughs> type of thing. Um, and then, you know, obviously J-Lo performed and, you know, she she stressed, you know, my country, you know, let you know that this is also the country of the Hispanics. And it's like she was saying it right in front of Mike Pence, like, you know, because that administration has been very, you know, anti-immigrant, right? Um, yeah. Lady Gaga sang the national anthem right in front of Mike Pence, you know, an LGBTQ icon in front of the most anti-LGBTQ, you know, politician. <laughs> Yeah. Somebody on Twitter put, I can't believe, um, <laughs> I can't believe that Mike Pence got to see Lady Gaga live before me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and then for me, the most, um, the most memorable part, obviously, yes, the whole swearing and all that stuff, all that stuff is memorable. That's good. Most memorable part was that poem. And I'll admit, I didn't, I, I was seeing the poem, but I didn't hear it. I unmuted for Biden's speech, but I didn't actually hear the poem in real time. I listened to the poem when I went over for Sunday dinner at my parents. Um, I watched it. It was it was brilliant. Um, absolutely loved it. She's 23 years old, I think. And uh, she's going. She was, I ain't gonna lie. I thought she was like 12 looking at her. I, I was like, <laughs> oh, but that's why I told you. I was like, yeah, man, if I was her age, I'd be all nervous. And then I realized, no, I ate the hell out of myself because she's only 20. She's still, <laughs> she's, 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 still she's 20. She's really young, right? Yeah. I mean, that's an amazing stage to be at at that young of an age. But she's 22. So I really yeah. aged myself, I feel. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I was just I was just saying that um, I really enjoyed it, and um, you touched on the fact that there were references to Hamilton uh, yes. in in her speech, which I enjoyed too. Um, she 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 referenced uh, the line "History has its eyes has its eyes on, on us. you," and then yeah. also George Washington's um, uh, what's it called "Under Your Own yeah, Fig one, Tree" from the song "One Last Time." You know, yeah, it, one it's, last time. It's a Bible scripture about something under your own vine. Yeah, tree. which is just crazy because yeah. if you think about it, remember COVID is the reason why so many people got to see Hamilton. Right, That's and it's, it's like, yo, uh, not even a year later, and it's being referenced at an inauguration, which is kind of just crazy thinking about you know the fact that hey, also one of the big things about this play was that that and if you guys haven't figured out me and me and uh, me and Zeno are like freaking huge ass Hamilton fans. Like it, it's like it just just got us right here in the feels. But uh, <laughs> you know you you. You're referencing this play, these lines from this play that's about people of color representing, you know, like how you said. Founding fathers. Yeah, the founding fathers. It's America being presented by being, well, how did he work? It's it's through the perspective of, you know, it's, it's, it's old America, which is, you know, just a lot of white people being represented by new America. America as it was being played by people how it is now. That's he said something along those yeah. lines. So right, it's just so crazy to think about that being an inauguration. Um, I'm not a huge um, poem fan. I guess you could poetry it, fan. Poetry, you know. I know uh, the Raven with Edgar Allan Poe was cool. You know, I've read. <laughs> a, I, I made it a goal to read a poem book one time. So I'm just not a. Uh, I'm just not a. I'm, but what I can tell when something is good, right? You know. Yeah. You don't have to be a composer to know that something is a beautiful piece of. So it was, it was amazing. Congrats to her. Yeah, like really cool or whatever. Uh, or yeah. whatever. And, you know, congratulations to her. Like it's, it's, a, it was, a, it was an amazing feat for her. I'm sure. Yeah, an honorable mention to Al Roker, um, getting a fist bump from Biden. A fist bump, which, yeah. Yeah, which is uh, a, a remake of his uh, handshake he got from Biden eight years ago. You know what? Chris, crazy to me about that part. 
how fast Joe Biden old ass moved to get get that fist bump. Yeah, no, I, but you, I, I love it. So I, I I watched it again on on the Today Show when they were talking to Al Roker about it. And the funny thing is, Joe Biden's like walking away, and it's like like he was really thinking about it. And there's like, I, right, it's Al. I'll go, I'll go run yeah. over there. But yeah, he was like running like when he did his speech on the night where um, the networks called the election for him. You know, when he ran down the the yeah. thing to go to the mic, that's how he, he was running. Yeah, I just, I'm just, I just remember that when I was looking at him during some of the debates, he looked old as hell, like just standing there with the, you know, looking like, you know, oh, he was like, oh, don't, don't fumble, don't yeah. fall, you yeah. know. Yeah, definitely the. Uh, the primary debates for sure. He, right, he, he looked like weak and frail, but this one's he's all looks. I mean, if you became the president of the United States when people thought you had zero chance over eight years ago, like I mean, like why wouldn't you have a, some spring in your step? Remember when uh, after the first debate, uh, the the thing that the Trump people started saying is that oh he took drugs or something like that. They started pushing that line. I'm like, really, guys? Like that, that's that's how you're gonna explain getting whooped? Like yeah, he took drugs. So <laughs> So, one thing I do want to touch on with the Biden inauguration is, um, I know you said it was cool. I don't know, I kind of had a bit of a, I don't know. Uh, qualm? Not even a qualm, it's just an iffy kind of way of feeling towards it, uh, towards the actual inauguration. Right, the whole ceremony part, it's just kind of like, we're going through this COVID pandemic, we're talking about ending this COVID pandemic, and then we do a big old party. Right, but I get why, I do, I really do get why. I'm not going to go, like, full leftist Twitter on you on that. <laughs> I get it. I really do. I mean, like, they had to do the ceremony. I think it would have been just as amazing if it had just been, a like, you know, we're not going to do an, a huge as inauguration because we want to, we're still trying to stop the spread. And then just do something small and ceremonial with the president, the vice president, you know, a couple of people, whatever. Obviously, obviously it wasn't anything like, you know, um, Trump's, uh, acceptance speech for this past election where everybody's out there, only person is one person wearing a face mask among the military, everybody else is wearing, you know what I mean? Everybody's bumped up, they separated people. So they had glasses, right? Didn't they have Pepsi glass? Yeah, they did. they did. So, yeah. I mean, they took it where you could say, hey, they're not, they're not acting like it's not there, right? But I get the symbolism behind it. So, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ar ar argue anything about that. Uh, yeah. It's just one of those. If they had done something small scale, I would have been like, "That's." They probably that could have been a great message too. It's nothing to take away from the actual inauguration, though. Yeah, yeah, and, and I already touched on you know why I thought it was cool. Uh, it's just it, it's the same thing like you know when nine eleven happened, right? And everyone applauded. You know the fact that Saturday Night Live, you know, came back on the air. The the Yankees and the Mets, you know, went back to playing baseball and all that stuff too. To say that you're not gonna derail our way of life by doing this terroristic thing. That so that's how I took it uh, with regards to like the Capitol um, Hill riots or yeah. insurrection. Uh, no, I get it. I and get then it. Like I yeah, said, I get it. I get it. Yeah. So get it's it. it's just you know like hey, th this is still some semblance of normal. Yeah, the semblance. I, I see Speaking what you mean though. 